Hey everybody and welcome to another Tim Allen 1337 guide. Uh, this video is going to be a little different from what I normally do, where I don't have a script. I'm not going to be cutting through specific parts of content. I'm just going to kind of make a video of me purchasing a node and placing structures around it. And I'll just cut through when I'm running back and forth and stuff like that. But I want to give you guys a guide to where you can kind of follow along with me as I build a node, but I'm also going to be making another video where I cut around and explain a little bit more concisely. So uh, first thing you need to do for a node war is to be on the right channel. So we find ourselves on Serendia 1. I'm going to be placing on a tier 4 node today, which is a 100 man cap. And today happens to be Thursday, so there's only one node that can be placed, one tier four node, 100 man, that can be placed. And I'll make a link to uh, where all that is. But we find ourselves on Serendia 1. Um, I happen to be in Tariff, where there is a guild military supply manager found right next to the guild manager. So this is who you want to talk to. So the first step is to make sure you're an officer of the guild that you're in or the GM, um, and make sure that you have allowance set for you, that your GM set allowance for you and that you have the funds to be able to afford it. So if you're doing a tier one to tier three node, you wanna use a strong uh, square. That should get you, I'm sorry, that's good for a tier three. And then the square for it, I believe, is tier one through tier four. So that's a tier three node right there, a strong square. And then the sturdy square is a tier four. And if you see the differences there, how many recovery centers, watches, flame towers, you can build the maximum number of barricades. You get more slots when you buy a better node. And I believe the nodes themselves are a little bit tankier as they go up in, uh, in uh, tier here. So we're going to go to a tier four. So we're going to buy a sturdy square fort. It's like that. And then while we're here, we're actually going to buy some uh, additional goods so I don't have to run back. So we've got a wooden fence is something we'll definitely need. Um, recovery centers. Need quite a few of these. We need six. Five. Five recovery centers, perfect. Okay, we need a supply depot. We need a Watcha, three Flame Towers, lots of barricades. You see my weight is going up there, so uh, we're going to have to start with that, and then we'll come back for some cannon observatories and uh, other items. So uh, now we need to find out where we're placing, right? So today there is only one Tier 4. I just happen to know which one it is, and if you don't know how to get to this map, the Node War map here, uh, hold Y and then move your D-pad left or right until you get to this map specifically. So I already have my Node War selected. It's the Northern Plain of Serendia. When you mouse over it, you can see it's a Tier 4, max participants 100, War Day every Thursday. Okay, So when you click on it, you see the Node War Zone. So this is everywhere where I'm able to place this node. And I haven't fought in this node war zone a whole bunch, but this is basically uh, most of the Serendia territory uh, siege war, except for you can come down just a little bit more over here. Um, so there's some pretty good spots up in the northeast here that I'm probably going to grab. Um, when you're placing a node, you want to be careful not to place too close to a, a city like Heidel right there, because you can town spawn. Right, so if, if an enemy fort's over here, and our fort is over here, we'll say, um, people can, instead of rezzing at their own base after they die, they can res at town and have a closer regroup point to us. You have to take a couple of things into consideration as I find a spot. Uh, again, no script, we're just gonna kinda run through it so you guys can see what I'm thinking, uh, and I'll talk you through it. So let's run out there to Serendia, and I'll pick you guys up after a quick jump cut. Okay, so I'm back in Serendia here now. Um, as I pull up the uh, world map, I'm in the territory. So this is a kind of the, the tough part, if you will, of Node Wars, is trying to decide in this huge area where you're gonna place your modular base and start building from there, because you have to consider a couple of things. And I'm gonna, I've already decided where I wanna place for tonight, but I wanna walk you guys through just a couple of easy traps. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna be making this guide about 
where the best places to uh, place are or anything like that. I got a couple years worth of knowledge and I just don't feel like selling it out for YouTube views. <laughs> so um going to place in a relatively well-known and established kind of safe place here. And I'll show you guys why I'm going to place there and why it's so popular. So I'm up in the mountains. You really want to consider other mountains and large rocks areas around you. So where this right here would look like you could build a pretty decent base. It's relatively flat, not too many obstructions, but what you would be doing is giving witches and wizards an excellent and rangers and all other classes, excellent places to regroup and cast down on your base. So you'd have a very difficult time if you were in an outnumbered situation, even this right here. Let's say the node was right here and this is where the respawn point is. Having this high ground right here be able to stand up and cast down on the base and kill people before they really have a chance to get you. This is a very easy vantage point. And then what makes it even worse is I can just run down. There's no steep drop or any sort of stun or anything. I can just run down as a melee class and just, and just dive in. So these types of areas are probably the biggest traps for a lot of guilds is building next to something like that or a large rock. So if you're too close to here, um, you could again very easily stand up here cast down on a base that's right there um, and then melee wouldn't have a tough time just jumping down a little bit now that can play both ways right you can res and run up there but i promise you uh that is not a defensive not a good plan <laughs> it's it's definitely a detriment so we're gonna run down here a little bit and this is kind of more of the same trap i see bases ba uh, built here every once in a while when uh serendia gets really busy this is a viable spot your watch a shooter is going to have a tough time. And then the regroup points up there. E even though it's a little too far to shoot down on, you can still regroup up there fairly safely. And you can find some spots just up here that aren't all the way up the mountain that are still really good to group on and cause a lot of havoc. So this is a really good regroup point. So this is not at nearly as bad of a spot because there is so much room. Your base can be fully away from that. So this is a viable node and siege spot, honestly. I just don't like it. I don't have to, I don't wanna have to climb all those rocks to have to defend or push people away. Uh, so I'm gonna keep marching on down here. Also notable, I should be wearing a ghillie. When you wear a ghillie or a Trent suit, whatever it's called in the pearl shop, uh, people can't see your name. So right now, if somebody comes across me, they'll see that Arsha is going to be placing on this tier 4 node. And they'll find my node placement, and they'll know where it is as I build the base and whose base it's going to be. Um, so this is the area I've kind of selected for tonight. Um, there's a rock over there. But we'll have enough high ground here to where it's not really going to matter. Finding the right peg to place this thing is going to be key. So I'm going to try to push it back just a little bit here. I think I really want to build the base right here. I think if I can find a blue peg, you can get a little bit of high ground there, but it's not much of a, a rock situation. We can put a flame tower there to help us defend that high ground. Very open, not a lot of obstruction. Watcha could still shoot over on those rocks if they decided to uh, group up there, but I, I think we're pretty close out of meteor range uh, if we just play it right. You can see there's some player structures over here or some non-player structures over here that'll always be in the game. That'll play both ways. There's kind of a natural choke that you can decide to use or not use, to, and they come through that choke, and that's on them. But you definitely want to be cognizant of this kind of stuff because it does play into how Node Wars play out. So, um, again, this area is nice. Just a nice, easy kind of build. So we're going to drop a fort here. I'm far enough away from that. I get this peg placement. Should be fine here. We go to our inventory, pick up that sturdy square fort or whatever fort that you're using, and that brings up this right here. So I really want it standing. Double check. Okay, 
so that'll be good right there. At least acceptable. Uh, for the record, I don't claim to be the best base builder. So as I uh, select it, it tells me this is going to be placing me to compete on Thursday's Node War for a Tier 4 Northern Plain of Syrindia. As when it starts, all that kind of stuff. So takes 15 seconds to play. So you want to be on a lower level character. I started talking about that earlier. You want to be on a lower level character and, and using a ghillie too because nobody can PvP me on a level 45 character. So I can't be interrupted. GVGs can't start, break out, all that kind of stuff. And I get a reload screen because the item was placed on my character. So it moves me away. Uh, so you want to make sure that you're using a, a sub 49 character, or I'm sorry, a sub 50 character. You probably want to be using a ghillie, and you should have flares when you're out here so you can uh, detect other ghillie players. So those are kind of the basics. So there's my fort. It takes an hour to build. I can rip it up at any point within the hour, but once an hour has gone by, I am 100% dedicated to being on this node. If you check the world map, there's my fort. And if you pick Northern Plains of Serendia, you can see it says one fort built. That's my that's my fort. Okay, so now we got a place to fight. Um, the next step is placing our annexes. Okay, so let's talk about strategies for placing annexes. Um, Personally, I like to start with flame towers. Uh, you can start with a watcha or a gate or anything else. You don't. There's no specific order. But as far as what I like to do, is start with the flame towers because that starts creating some kind of natural funnels. Uh, the only node that can have three is a tier four node, <clears throat> so all other nodes will have uh, one or two flame towers. So we're in a nice open spot here. So I'm just gonna try to create like a, a triangle of flame towers just so I can have good coverage on my actual node and then the annexes I'm gonna place next to it. Start with flame towers. There. That'll build in just a little while. <clears throat> now you can rebuild annexes during node war. And that's what the supply depot is for. And your defense team should be ready and prepared to be able to do that. It's another one on the opposite side of the base. Some of these regroup points are. I don't want to put it too far out from the from the node because you want to be able to fight and defend on it. I want it to touch the node as well. This one might be a little far out, but it's kind of my... I use the third, if you will, flame tower to be a little more aggressive, and then I'll bring the other one in. Oh, Gordon. Placed it too far out or too close to that tree. Even though the peg is blue, not necessarily me. Let's see what the truth. Just because the peg is blue does not necessarily mean that you can place it there, unfortunately. Let's place it right on my reload it, but Not quite as far out as I want it to be, but it'll be fine. So you can see the flame tower in the background there is uh, just almost done there. The health is the top bar, the time is the bottom bar, the green bar. Oh. Okay, so we've got good coverage. Uh, but the easiest way to come in... I think I want to put the watch. Put the watch.
watch them. So it's covered by that flame tower, but it can also hit up this mountain if they decide to try to cast down from over there. <clears throat> so up there, that flame tower is a little vulnerable. Some of these rock placements here probably have this tower just a little bit far up. Okay. Let's see if we can sneak a watch in. So the uh, node fort will block the other flame tower. Some of the regroup points over there, but this will be good enough. right now there's no perfect placement for a watcha these annexes are actually surprisingly tanky we found out in our last node war too so they can kind of hold their own a little bit i think the only thing that i'm really susceptible to right now is a full regroup on this rock right here with maybe their backline witches and wizards up on this rock you know they're less geared people see how far up. yeah they could group up right here but that they're gonna be dealing with that watch it pretty heavy Arsha is one of the best geared and most populated guilds so I find it to be an acceptable risk even though we're planning for a 2v1 tonight see how that plays out though so that's a good watch up placement the other place that they could group up at feel good about it right up in this area so if they're over here, they're, they're too far away to really be effective, and that watch is going to be hitting them from this distance. So this is what you have to do when you build a base, especially if you're new at this, is you really need to take a look at your base every once in a while and see if you were attacking it, how difficult would it be to come from some of these spots that would look good to regroup. So really, their only point of entry right now They can run straight in south. Gonna have a tough time with that watch. I don't want to double up flame towers back here because then that's gonna make this too juicy of an area. I almost rather them come in towards the watcha and funnel people towards that. We can go heavy on the barricades for the lack of flame tower coverage. I want to place this flame tower as close. Let's double watch a coverage. I think. Trying to decide between this side and the other side. Don't want to put a flame tower back here. Doesn't make sense to me. Let's hold the third flame tower for now. Let's hold the third flame tower for now. Let's put the supply depot down. So this is another big um, important item. You wanna make sure that this has coverage. It's not gonna be nuked from some safe place. So I like to put it as close to the node and the a flame tower as possible. I think right there would be just fine. on top of me so I get reloaded. Okay. Supply depot's going up. So again, that's where you get uh, your guild items from. You can get potions, you can get your horse, you can get uh, you can repair your gear, all that kind of stuff from the supply depot. So it's extremely important. You want to make sure that it's covered. Um, let's get this wooden fence up. So this is 
This is probably going to determine where put. Last flame top. I think I want to put it up front. If I had to guess, I'd say that they'd be coming in from this direction. Don't want to block the watch's shot. I think I'm going to place it here. So basically, this gate is. I, yet yeah, you can open this gate, but it's basically a, a very large barricade. If you put it too close to like the supply depot that's building, there's actually going to be a pretty good chance of splash damage. So you want to give yourself just a little bit of space. I think we're going to place it there. So you can only place one of these on Node Wars. And if you have the right fort for Siege, you can place two. But again, Siege only happens Saturday, and that's not what we're focused on here. Now the gate's being constructed. I like to wait for that gate to be constructed, because the... The way it looks is a little awkward when you're trying to connect barricades to it so it doesn't, uh, you don't have holes in your barricades, which we'll get to in a moment. So we're looking good here. I do think I'm going to place a flame tower back here and try to cover the base. I think that's the direction I'm going to go with this. If it'll let me put it on this peg. So if we get a large push on our watch, we'll we'll definitely be able to thwart it pretty pretty easily. Now you don't want to congregate too many juicy targets together because then you start risking just you know a meteor blast or a blizzard blast just knocking out to your most important things while you're on cooldown or timers or what. So that's why I don't just put three flame towers right next to the supply depot. It's actually stupid, <laughs> but I've always been willing to put a uh, watch it next to a flame. Especially with how siege weapons, how powerful they are right now. Okay, so the least important uh, part of this process, in my opinion, is where you put recovery centers. To me, they're just pretty worthless. So my strategy with the Barricades is going to be, I, I generally just make a V from the gate. Just roll barricades, I'll roll barricades just back this way. So it kind of forces people to wrap around the base and gives a good reach on the on the flame towers. Then I'm going to run this, just a, a light V here. I'm just going to run this back like this, just a little bit. Uh, so it forces people to want to come into the flame tower here. Now you get a lot of barricades on a tier 4 node. So I'm probably going to roll some barricades just between these um, siege machines here. Just to create a little more of an issue. So the, the flame towers will be out front and center and be taking damage right along with the uh, barricades. But it'll force them to fight on the flame towers. It'll force them to fight on the flame towers. And then if they knock the flame towers out, uh, there's, a, there's a choke of people coming in. So, let's start with this over here. Get a little tricky with this rock. That it is. I'm going to have to wrap around. Get the item. sucks. Start straight. That's okay. We get a lot of uh, we get a lot of barricades to place. So the the base is shaping up already. No base is perfect, and as I said earlier in the video, or at least I should have, I'm definitely not the best base builder in the world. Got the placement's down pretty all right. It was functional. Be 
these two pegs away from me. create some uh, space for us to have some recovery centers and then make that flame tower worth something if people push in from this direction. space roll right over to so this is the tedious part if you haven't noticed <laughs> building barricades is definitely the tedious part but gotta be done I've been having enough weight to hold all the materials I'm gonna have to run back to more barricades uh, and then there'll be another run which I probably won't put in the video but there's ammo I'll show you guys next time when I get to the uh, supply depot or the uh, the guild manager that there's uh, ammo for the flame towers that you have to load them up with too so that'll be the last part getting the watch on the flame towers filled with ammo These barricades are looking pretty good. Not gonna be able to jump through those. Uh, just a little trick that I learned. I just like to put a barricade close enough. These trees are killing me. I like to put a barricade close enough the watcher so it can shoot itself and facing the watch so that's gonna look funny a little bit of distance there but the flame tower is sitting right on it too so it'll be fine so the watcher will be able to shoot the node to kind of protect itself and it'll be able to shoot this uh, barricade behind it if it's still alive when that flame tower goes down or if that flame tower goes down and at the very least, it'll be a really weird distraction for people who have no idea what they should be hitting. <laughs> if you put a watch up on a hill or something, it's absolutely necessary to do this. Um, the way we've got this node built right now, a little more of a luxury. Is doing it to show you guys. Let's Once the uh, barricades go down, I'll start putting some, uh, or at least they start shaping up. I really want to wait for this thing to be built. This angle's weird. It's done. Keep running these. So don't think you have to completely close in your base with barricades. It's just not the case. You want to close off vulnerable spots, and you want to funnel people for sure. You don't need to have a completely encased or enclosed base. And honestly, it's it's best if you don't, in my opinion, because then you can kind of control the flow of people. You know, when you when I did that wraparound of my own base to try to figure out where I would want to attack the base, that gives me an idea of where I want to create openings to force them have make bad decisions, basically.
So the placement mechanics are, uh, it takes a little getting used to. My previous experience playing this game definitely helps. That's why I wanted to make a, a long scriptless video so you guys can get a feel. The timing and the thought process of, of stuff. Anyway, uh, I'm going to run to Heidel real quick, restock up on some uh, barricades, and I'll run right back to the base. Okay, so I'm back at the base here. I've got some cannon observatories and a couple more barricades. Um, I've placed a couple of these barricades just real quick to move the video along here. Um, but So what we're going to do is we wrapped around this tree. I don't love that I had to do that, uh, but unfortunately that's the reality of the situation. Sometimes you really can't foresee some of these things until you start building the base. Uh, and so what we're going to do is get a better this so I make sure I up number one. Is just keep bringing it down. Uh, that flame tower now is in kind of a weird spot, but we're going to put some recovery centers in between there. So it'll be good bait. Recovery centers help reduce the amount of time that it takes to recover or uh, to respawn. And so early on, they're pretty much just bait. They're kind of a tertiary um splash damage kind of object that you want to hit but some newer players and people that want to get sweaty will go after them so i love putting them in 80 spots right so if you if you put them someplace where they're free and out in the open that's one thing but putting them next to flame towers and stuff like that hopefully you bait some melee in to get some free kills so I'm putting one cannon observatory out. I don't know what our cannon team looks like or if we have anybody interested or anything like that, but uh, just in case, I'm going to put a cannon observatory down. And then we're just going to kind of sprinkle these recovery centers into the base. Um, I could, I, again, could not be less concerned about the placement of these things. You just put them by something that can protect them, and if you can't, fuck it. <laughs> but try to keep it within the confines of the base. try to keep the uh i'm gonna put barricades there i don't want to do that i try to keep the uh line of sight consideration for the flame towers and stuff that are operating to make sure that they can still see around some of these things uh but sometimes they just have to suffer <laughs> wrapping this uh, barricade down here so I'm gonna show you guys what I did on the other side in a second and explain why I did it that way hate this angle it's a second pack over uh, so down the other side the uh, Barricades, we're going to run right into the watcha, so we're going to wrap around that watcha just a little bit. It's going to give it a, a good opportunity to protect itself as well, like we talked about earlier. You see how, kind of in this weird angle here, if this was a lower tier node, like a tier 3, I'd probably just leave it like this. So it would force people to regroup up here, which would be fine. But then they're going to be crashing right into this flame tower watch a combo. And I'd probably just put one barricade right here and make that a priority to upgrade this barricade. God, that actually sounds like a good idea. I might just do that. Because even this choke... I'm going to do that. That's, that's a good idea. Even though I could fully enclose it. This is better. So I'm pretty much asking these people to come in through this area. I'm going to reload my game here.
So again, the uh, Guildmaster, Officer, you can have as many people helping you do this as possible. When it comes to running ammo to the machines, I highly suggest that you bring a friend or Guildmate or Guildmaster to come help you do that. There we go. So that watch is going to be able to aim over that fairly easily. And that's just going to be a, a big annoyance, the way this is set up. Where there's not really a bunch of charge horses or anything like that. It's going to be really difficult for them to work through that, especially if we get those upgraded right in the beginning. Um, we'll see how it plays out, though. <laughs> Let's keep moving on. These I'm going to take a nice little right turn afterwards. So the base is really starting to look good. Happy with this. Got some space for some extra recovery centers. I don't like stacking too many things together. That one area there with the two recovery centers, supply depot, flame tower, that's that's a little too congregated for what I normally try to do. But you know, again, sometimes it'd be like that. If I had another, if I wanted to put another cannon observatory down, I would definitely consider moving it on the opposite side of the base. You don't want one good angle that you can't see while you're building the base to be able to wipe out half of your annexes or your strategic advantages. See, we're starting to funnel them towards the back of the base. It's going to be easier for us to defend. So if we funnel them to where the flame tower and watcha is, the two flame towers and the watcha, they're going to have an absolute terrible time. Uh, but the alternative for that is for them to come into the tankiest part of our base, which is fully enclosed and protected by one side of a flame tower. Uh, and that should be able to reach through the gate most of it. So the most vulnerable spot of our base is the most open right here. So I'm really planning on not putting anything in this area, maybe just a recovery center or something like that. So they, they won't be able to go in through, they will be able to come in through here, but it, it won't net them anything. And if they start attacking the base right here, that flame tower is just barely out of range for people over here, but that one isn't. So there's coverage on almost every angle. There is coverage on every angle of attacking the space. As long as we keep our flame towers up, and we fight like we've played this game before. We should be just fine. So the, this is pretty toxic. If they wanted to come in, they've got to tap around like this or something. That's awful. The watch is just going to shoot right into them. Good. That's good. And so if they come over here to try to take down some of our more powerful things... Or, uh, more of our more of our valuable things we can be standing up on this rock over here as a neutral spot and uh, catch them out or we can just be up this hill defense can just be up this hill and then we can PA and push into them or or string backwards or something like that a lot of a lot of opportunity this is a good base good base placement We're happy with it Wolves, okay, so if that was like an enemy guild, that guy's just gathering. <laughs> he has no idea what's going on, which is fine. But if that was an enemy guild, I'd be I'd be caught. The jig would be up. So I'm going to take a couple of pictures of this base and send it to my defensive coordinator. Let him know uh, what the priority is to upgrade the barricades, which you do with uh, 15 iron ingots and 30 melted copper shards. Uh, and then he's going to coordinate his defense team to have some extra annexes in case something gets knocked out, specifically supply depots. We should have a good node war. I'm going to be streaming all of my node wars on uh, twitch.tv slash timallen1337. So if you want to check it out, uh, join my Discord. Uh, I announce when I have node wars all the time. I'm going to be creating a uh, more cut-up version, more of a guide of how to do this versus 
me just talking about node war placement and giving you all of my information that I have as I place a base together. So this base is pretty much done. I'm just going to pepper in a couple extra recovery centers, but this gives you the complete idea, in my opinion, of how to build a base. Um, the only hole in the space is the holes that I want them to come through. So we're inviting them to think that this is a weakness when really it's a, it's a meat grinder. So I'll put maybe one or two barricades in here again, just to obscure it a little bit and put the rest of the recovery centers down. But um, there's no real wrong way to build a base. I just really suggest you guys keep things inside of barricades at if you can. Uh, the only exception is a watcha every once in a while you can throw if there's a good hill or something like that, putting a watch on a piece of elevated territory is almost always a good idea. So that's going to be it for me on this video. I will do a more concise video, probably release it at the same time. So uh, watch both, watch one. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys next time.